sometimes in life, uh, something comes upon you where you, you feel, boy, am I being tested now. I look at Joseph, uh, thinking of him in Genesis chapter 37 and verse 13. Uh, and there's many examples in scriptures of all the saints being tested. But I'd like to look at Joseph a little bit today. And in Genesis, Israel said unto Joseph uh, to go ahead to Shechem uh, to find his brethren. And uh, he wanted to know how they were doing, they were with the sheep, and so on. And when his brothers saw him approaching from afar off, they conspired against him. They conspired against Joseph, the young brother, to murder him and cast him in a pit. This is his own family. Can you imagine? Your own family conspiring to do away with you. Why? Because he dreamed these dreams and they didn't want to hear about it anymore uh, because he thought, well, in his dreams that there would be his brothers bowing down and serving him. Fortunately, even though the brothers were determined to slay him, his brother Reuben, one of the older, did not want him killed. And so Reuben couldn't go against all his brothers at the same time, but he thought, hmm, uh, rather than slay him, why don't, we, um, why don't we cast him into some pit, and we'll say some beasts came and ate him. And this idea of his was that he could come back later and save Joseph and get him back to his father. So Reuben had a good thought. In any event, when Joseph arrived on the scene, his own brothers seized him and cast him into a pit that he could not get out of. And before Reuben could return, they sold him into slavery. So, in one day, he went from being a member of a good family to being betrayed and being sold into slavery. I call that a bad day. I call that, and you can imagine being in the pit and thinking everything he must have thought. And then being sold and off he went uh, with the Midianites to Egypt in bondage, and how he must have felt on that long journey. What a test he must have undergone, not knowing what the outcome was going to be. No idea what the next day would hold. In any event, um, when Reuben got back to the pit, Joseph was not there. So Reuben tried to do the right thing, but didn't work out. The thing about Joseph, however, was after his test, when he was brought down to Egypt, a man named Potiphar bought him from the Ishmaelites. And he brought him to his household, to his land, and uh, the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph obviously must have besought the Lord while he was in prison, while he was in slavery, while he was being sold. He must have besought the Lord. He must have never cursed his brothers. He must have done the right thing in every step. He must have been in prayer most of the way. And I wouldn't be surprised if he was in fasting, because I don't know how well they would feed the slaves. You know. He must have gone, his heart must have been wrought. And so the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a, a prosperous man as he was in the house of Potiphar. And what happened was, Potiphar saw that the Lord was with Joseph and that everything that Joseph touched was a blessing. And Joseph found grace in his master's sight. And Potiphar uh, made him overseer of his house in all that he had he put into Joseph's hand. Made him in charge of everything. And so out of Joseph's
Joseph's first major test came Joseph's first major testimony. And I observed, as I was looking up the word test in the Bible, I didn't see it. But I saw testimony in the Bible, and I realized that test is a root word in testimony. And Joseph could not have given his first testimony if he didn't have his first test. In other words, testimony without test is not a full, a full word. It's only emoni. Can you give an emoni? Not unless you have a test. Then you can say, here's my testimony. So things were going well for Joseph. And this is a familiar story. We know what happened next. Pontifar's wife looked upon him. He was a good-looking young man, easy on the eyes, and she desired him. This wasn't right because she was married to his master. She wasn't single. It would have been fine if she was, and they wanted to become a couple, but no, she was already given. And Pontifar was often away from his household on business. It wasn't unusual for his wife to be in the house alone while Joseph was in charge. So opportunity was there, and she approached Joseph. And Joseph was shocked. And he felt it was not right. How could he do this thing? Could he betray his own master who had been so good to him? Could he betray the Lord who had restored him from the betrayal of his family and slavery and put him in oversight in this whole house? Could he betray him? No, he couldn't betray the Lord. And so he resisted Pontifar's wife's advances. And she was insulted. She was enraged. Her feelings were hurt. She felt like he didn't find her attractive. And so she made like he had made advancements on her and falsely accused Joseph. What did Joseph do? Did he rail against her? Did he speak words of anger? against his master's wife. Joseph was mute as a sheep to the slaughter. He had that spirit of God in him. He didn't even defend himself. He allowed himself to be accused falsely, and he allowed himself to be thrown in prison without ever speaking a word against his wife. Joseph's second test. All that he had built, all that was going good for him, was taken away, and now here he is, betrayed and in prison. And being in that situation must have been a great, great test for him. All source of income gone, all the future hope gone, not knowing Again, what tomorrow held. And we've been in tests like this. You know, in your life, it is natural to go through tests. You can be out of work. That's a great test. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You don't know how you're going to support your family. Are you going to lose the place you live? Can you drive your car? Can you pay your insurance? Can you send your children to school? Can you put food on the table? It's a big test. It's a huge test. 